Welcome to Electro Online. Here we're going to do the same example that we did in the last video, but we'll do it with a different method. We still are trying to find the equivalent Norton circuit by finding the Norton current and the Norton resistance. And from the previous video, we knew that this was going to be 4 ohms, and that's 1 amp. To find the Norton resistance, it's exactly the same. We remove the current source. We set the voltage source equal to zero. In other words, we short out the voltage source. And then with the remaining circuit, we try to find the Norton resistance by measuring the resistance between terminals A and B. When we did that, we ended up with 4 ohms. Now we're going to find the Norton current. But instead of doing it the way we did last time, we're going to say that the Norton current is equal to the Thevenin voltage divided by the Norton resistance, which, by the way, is equal to the Thevenin resistance. So we need to find the Thevenin voltage, which is the voltage across terminals A and B with the original circuit like that. And we can do that by assuming that the voltage at this branch point is equal to V1, whatever V1 is, and that we have some current flowing into that branch. Here we have current I1 flowing into the branch, or I should say branch point. Here we have current I2 flowing into the branch point. And let's assume we have a current I3 flowing away from that branch point. And by summing up all the currents entering the branch, branch point and setting it equal to all the currents leaving the branch point, we end up with this equation. I1 plus I2, those are the two currents entering, equals I3, which is the current leaving. Now, I1 is easy. That's simply the 2 amp source, 2 amps plus. But to find I2, that's the current through the 4 ohm resistor. To find that, we take the voltage difference between here and here and dividing it by the resistance, which would be 12 volts minus V1 divided by 4. 12 volts minus V1 divided by 4, and that equals I3, which is the current leaving. Now notice that here this would be 0 volts, and we have current flowing from this point to this point. The voltage difference between V1 and here going around to here would be V1 minus 0, and then the resistance total would be 8 plus 8 plus 5, which is 21 ohms. That means we get V1 divided by 21 ohms is the current I3. Once we know current I3, we can find out the voltage drop across the 5 ohm resistor, which would be the same as voltage thevenin. So that's what we need to do is find I3. Okay, we can do that by solving for V1. And what we need to do here is multiply everything by, hmm, well, we can multiply everything by 81, or uh, let's multiply everything by 4 first and see what we get. So we get 2 plus, oop, no, when I multiply everything by 4, I get 8 plus 12 minus V1 equals V1 or 4V1 divided by 21. Hmm. When I move this across the other side, I get 8 plus 12, which is, well, we'll get there later, is equal to 4V1 divided by 21 plus V1. Okay, 4V1 plus V1, that would be when I add this together and I add this together, I get 20 is equal to 21 plus 4, which is 25 over 21V1. And finally, if I want to find V1, I get V1 is equal to 20 times 21 divided by 25, which is 4 fifths times 21. This is equal to 4 over 5 times 21. And that would be 84 divided by 5. And that would be equal to 16.8 volts, if I'm not mistaken. 5 times 16 is 80. 5 times 0.8 is 4, and that looks right. So V1 is equal to 16.8 volts. Now we need to find the voltage drop across here. What I can say now is that the voltage drop across the 5 ohm resistor is equal to the total voltage from V1 to 0. That would be V1, voltage V1, times the ratio of the 5 ohms, because this is a linear circuit. This is three resistors in series. It would be 5 divided by the total, which would be 8 plus 8 plus 5, or 21 ohms. This is equal to V1 is equal to 16.8 volts. Multiply times the ratio of 5 over 21. And the calculator, 
take 16.8 divided by 21 times 5 equals exactly 4 volts. So the voltage drop across the 5 ohm resistor, V across the 5 ohm resistor, is equal to 4 volts. And coming back over here, realizing that that must be equal to Thevenin voltage, we can then say that voltage Thevenin is equal to 4 volts. Now that we have the Thevenin voltage and we have the Thevenin or Norton resistance, then we can go back to this equation realizing that I Norton, the Norton current, is equal to the Thevenin voltage, voltage Thevenin, divided by the resistance Norton, which is the same as the resistance Thevenin, which is equal to 4 volts, divided by 4 ohms, which is equal to 1 amp. And that's the same answer we got in the previous example. So there's another method in which you can find the current, the equivalent Norton current, by simply finding the Thevenin voltage, dividing it by the Norton resistance, and then by that ratio you can find the Norton current. And that's how it's done using this particular method.